another beautiful, we'll just pretend there's music playing, there's music in here, right? Oh, it's another beautiful morning here in the hood. Beautiful Port Coquitlam, Vancouver, British Columbia. You're here with the Morning Dose Microdose Coaches, Mike Olt and James Coulter. Two G's on about a G probably right now. OG's. Yeah, the OG's. Yeah, we're a o- little older than the young G's. Yes. And you know, it's funny because these young guys, all right, let's talk about young people for a second here, man. I, I was out a little while ago just taking a walk uh, with my buddy and we were walking down... Um, the downtown part there was on Denman. What's that beach called? Sunset Beach or whatever? English Bay. English Bay, yeah. So I'm walking down there and some wackos were on uh, some mushrooms. Some hardcores around. Dude, they were dancing to no music and high as hell. You could tell on mushroom. I was mushroom guys, you can tell, right? And I'm like, wow, these young kids, man. They're just You can like, always tell the mushroom guys. Dude, yeah. you know what I relate recreational mushroom used to? And it's kind of, people are like, you're crazy. Camping. But well, I, I relate it to camping. It, they're good. They're good on a social, like, uh, fun basis. Sometimes it's hard, though, if you're in an environment, you take a lot of mushrooms and you got to just curl. I, I have to go curl up in a ball somewhere. It's all about the dosing people. Yeah, buddy. It's too much. But these guys are just whacked out on, and I'm like, man, you know, these kids don't know it. They don't know what amazing things they're doing to their brain. Maybe they do. They, you know, they might watch the, look at the internet and listen to experts like us talk about it, but... You know, even a major session like that, like a big dose of mushrooms and just go loopy with your brain will do a lot of amazing things to your brain. It's a big reset, people. It's a big reset. It really is the reset button. Yeah. Like, have you, have you in the last year or anything taken a major dose? No, I haven't. The last major dose I took was, uh, I guess, about 20 years ago. Oh, wow. And... Uh, I still remember it. It was uh, it was one of those ones where the bag was put in front of me, and uh, it was the three finger pinch. It mm. wasn't no way in it. I don't know if it was two, three, four grams, but I took it, and uh, we the three of us finished off the bag, and then we went to the club. Oh, worst thing! People yeah. don't go to the club <laughs> if you do mushrooms. Uh, that's <laughs> so the uh, yeah, worst I just thing. Uh, I had a a little bit of a bad trip, not where I was you know, seeing things or, um, a bad trip, meaning I was feeling very bad, very violent, very, um, I wasn't feeling good. Yeah. And, uh, I didn't do it again after that. And the first time I've touched mushrooms since then is microdosing. microdosing. Yeah. Mm, Interesting. And, uh, that was about two years ago. Uh, full story confession. I was once with, um, uh, Higgins in Victoria. And we were in his, back in the 90s, we were in his, uh, his little fucking machine car. You remember that thing? The, uh, the Impala with all the yeah. hydraulics in it. And, uh, and so I was on that, in the car and we got pulled over by the police because apparently someone said that he had a bomb in his truck, but it was just the hydraulic machine. And we had an ounce of mushrooms in the car. And back in the 90s, if you got caught with mushrooms, you're, char- you're getting charged. Yeah, 100%. That's how it was, right? And so we split the ounce and ate i ate half an ounce he ate half an ounce i ate more i ate more than a half an ounce because he couldn't eat it fast enough i was like used to it oh like super troopers intro oh man and so we eat it and then we get arrested come out like it was the whole gang thing like we had a bomb terrorist thing right they take us to jail leave us leave me in the drunk tank and all of a sudden the stuff starts kicking in and i was in this little cell High on it, over half grand. Oh man, it was. Mike and Higgins were G's back in the wow. day. So if the police even it was drove over. by, they'd pull them over. Oh yeah, it was bad days back then. <laughs> and you know, that was trauma. You know, people don't think about our lives back in the 90s and all the shit we went through as children, man, both you and yeah. I. And that trauma, you know, is something that it has been cured for me and I know it has for you by a lot of the microdosing. I mean, we still carry memories of things, but. The trauma I feel has kind of passed me by. Like I've almost grown out of it since I started microdosing. Well, you sort of uh, take a step back and you can see all the trauma and you don't ruminate on it. It's sort mm-hmm. of, uh, you start to accept it. Mm-hmm. You know, like when I grew up, I, you know, born 74, you know, back when uh, parents beat the kids, back when teachers were allowed to beat the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, these days, you know, if, if a child is beat, they're on medication. Like it's, mm-hmm. um, and you know, I don't agree with hitting kids myself, um, but it's just the evolution yeah. that we've gone and, mm. you know, the seventies, the eighties, the nineties yeah. and now, you know, 
Well, it was crazy because seventies to eighties they were smacking and spanking kids, and then they teachers got teachers were beaten. Kids. Remember that teachers were, and then they got into medication. So we're going to give Ritalin and all this other stuff to kids, yeah. right? And then nineties kind of came, and juvie was the big thing. So now we're going to throw kids in jail, right? That was the big thing. They don't even have juvies now. But I mean, all these things that you know, we grew up in an era that was really like get spanked, take medication, go to jail. Those were our childhoods, right? And if, I, I was <laughs> bouncing through foster care. Yeah, foster same. home to foster home. Yeah, same. Right. So, so that's trauma we carry into our adulthood. And it was no wonder that we suffered so much in our life as adults, buddy. Like ca carrying trauma like that. And I know there's people out there who've had worse. And um, we're never, t we're not, you know, um, saying we're better than anybody, but we're sharing our experiences uh, about carrying trauma. And, you know, what did it for me was the major dose that I did maybe about three years ago was the last time I did eight grams and I locked myself in my bedroom and my guest room, dark room, uh, and lied there and cried and laughed and tripped out and, you know, curled up in a ball and it was like an exorcism, right? I was in there for se uh, six hours while my girl was at work. So she wouldn't be there. She didn't even know I did it. You got to be truthful. You got to let it all out. Yeah. And I, if she was there, I wouldn't have been able to be comfortable. I would have been all weird. You know how she is militant, right? So I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to do this. So I had to wait till she went to work and then I did it. And then like I came out of it and I was like, oh my God, man. Like I, I had these visions, childhood, it, like everything. And I came out of it and I realized I have my issue in life. My number one issue is abandonment issues. Yep. Mine right? too. Mine too. Right. And, and you know, us being given up for foster care at a young age was probably the most traumatic thing that could have happened to us. Yeah. You've had some traumatic stuff as well, but that being uh, being given up is something you carry for a long time. It changes your whole dynamic. Like mm. I have friends that, you know, grew up with both parents and uh, they still go over to their parents' house. Well, both my parents died, both drug addicts. And, uh, you know, my... Uh, my family is more the people that are close to me, the people yeah. that, you know, give me that time that yeah. I need. And understand um, you. I do suffer from abandonment issues. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was abandoned at uh, six months old. Um, you know, thank God I went into a good family. Yeah, no kidding. But, uh, yeah, and I didn't turn out too bad. I had my, my problems with addiction in my 20s and, uh, you know... Yeah, Just, yeah. It, it's reality, man. And, you know, it's funny, though, because we've made it to 45, 46. 46 and a lot of people yeah. we know haven't, you know. No. And, you know, they, they let their trauma get the best of them, you know. And it's, and you know, I guess I would tell everybody that no matter how your tr much your trauma is, l little or, or a really big, like if it's a really big traumatic experience or a small one, it's all the same. All trauma is trauma to the brain. Yeah. If you get hit with a hammer or you get hit with a chair, it's still trauma, yeah. right? And that's how you got to look at trauma. So even if you had a little bit of trauma in your life, it's all relative. Like, you know, there's some people who can go to jail for one night and be completely traumatized by it. And then there's people that can do 10 years on their head and walk out and be okay, kind of traumatized maybe, right? Like it's, you know, it's all relative to the person, no matter what you go through. You, yeah. you have, if you have trauma... You have to address it. The worst thing you can do is put meds on it. You have to get to the root issue, right? And that's what mushrooms really help me do. And that's why we're here yeah. talking about microdosing. So let's, uh, in this episode, uh, we keep these always quick so you can just listen to them really fast and then get on with your life. Um, let's talk about where mushrooms come from. Because I know you are a freaking expert at this. Like, well, I wouldn't. Uh, dude, I've stop. I wouldn't say an stop. I've seen what you've done. Just don't yeah. let him fool you. I've seen what he's done. I've tasted your product. Like it's good. I uh, I was a weed grower back in the day. I was twenty years old. Me and a buddy, we uh, grew weed, and uh, you know, it's a uh, it's a little bit of a science to grow weed. It's uh, mm. you know, it was a little bit tough for us when we were that age. We needed a lot of uh, equipment, um, but uh, you know, I. I wanted to grow mushrooms, yeah. you know, two years ago, I went looking for someone to teach me how to grow mushrooms. And, uh, surprisingly, the only people I met were, uh, you know, those mushroom guys that are talking to trees on weekends. <laughs> um, they weren't, they weren't there. Yeah. Um, 
so I started doing uh, these online courses. Um, I started doing research, watching YouTube videos, um, started to buy some of the equipment and stuff. And uh, I studied it for probably about 10 months before I actually put a show together and uh, started growing, cultivating mushrooms. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's it, growing mushrooms is not culinary. No. Like it's it's science it's very difficult like let's not get it twisted i set up a a mushroom a mushroom lab and uh you know you have your laboratory in there that is a complete clean room and you're working with petri dishes and scalpels and uh you know you're cloning the mushrooms um it's it's science it's science it's absolutely you have to have your environments exactly on point or else your mushrooms aren't going to be happy and they're not going to grow fully yeah yeah that makes sense there's a there's a couple different ways that i know of growing mushrooms uh number one is using bins you can use uh these big bins and like the tupperware bins yeah the tupperware or rubber maids or they have these bins specially made for growing mushrooms um but to grow mushrooms people you need mycelium Mm. and uh the mighty m Yes, yes. and mycelium grows in a completely dark um, atmosphere at about 30 degrees Celsius, and it will be super happy and grow at that. It doesn't even need much air. You can put them in a closet, you can put them, uh, you know, in a Tupperware or a a Rubbermaid. Um, The mycelium will grow regardless whether it, you know, as long as the environment is perfect, which is 30 degrees Celsius and zero light. Hmm. Um, When your mycelium is fully grown, you know, you can grow it on uh, corn kernels. You can grow it on uh, oat, um, whole oats. You can grow it on bird seed. Um, Wow. And the reason why they grow on, say, like whole oats Hmm. is because whole oats have a hard shell. Okay, mm-hmm. and mycelium is very, very sensitive to bacteria and it can get contaminated very easily. So you get a jar and you clean your oats, mm-hmm. you cook them a little bit to loosen them up a little bit, get yeah. the water inside, and then you put some mycelium in a jar and you lock it up. And what that does is the mycelium uh, starts taking over these little pods of oats. Mm. It goes to the pod and then it goes inside the pod and it completely colonizes inside and then it keeps going and as soon as you have your whole jar of colonized you know grain um, you can shake it up and then you put it into um, some sort of substrate Uh, people use lots of different substrates it's basically your dirt mixture Um, remember one thing mushrooms grow on dead wood so there's lots of different recipes for in the wild you mean yes yeah um but even like in in a a controlled environment i use um i'll tell you all what i use for my substrate i use master's mix and that is 50 percent hardwood pellets and Mm. 50 percent soy hull which is your uh which your your food so um and water completely organic um, and they grow super strong, super happy. Mm. I, uh, I absolutely love growing mushrooms. It's funny because people don't realize like mushrooms. Okay, and this is going to maybe trip somebody out if they, and maybe if you're high, you'll get be like, "Wow, ah, my mind's blown <laughs> right now." But mushrooms are, at all aspects of their lifespan, they are all about set and setting. Right, mushrooms when they grow. It's the way they're set in something, in yep. their environment, in their setting. 100%. When, I've, when, I've, sorry. I've, yeah, go ahead. I've grown many different styles of mushrooms, different species, um, and I find some of the species grow different. Um, it's all about getting your, um, um, your gene. It's all mm. about gene isolation. When you're at the mycelium level and you're growing mycelium in the lab Mm. what you're trying to do is you're trying to get a monoculture you're trying Mm. to get um basically one gene you're trying to uh, gene isolate so a mushroom has many genes like a person like a family look at it like a family there's you know the strong boy there's the big papa there's a small little daughter and then there's the mama 
When yeah. you grow mushrooms, you get all different types. But when you're growing mushrooms properly, you start with a monoculture and your mushrooms will grow in sync. Mm, yeah, it's so cool, man. It's mushrooms are kind of the picky uh the picky drug. They're very, a little bit, eh? They're very picky. I've grown mushrooms that look uh completely deformed and i mean it's all about your atmosphere you yeah. know your your humidity your environment that your mushrooms are growing in yeah. if your environment gets really cold mm -hmm. it will stunt your mushrooms mm. if your environment is too wet it will stunt your mushrooms mm. there's so many variables that will stunt or change or alter your mushroom yeah you know even the way that they're uh, growing yeah. You know, if they're if they're growing in a bag or a bin, they're going to grow towards the side of the bag or towards the bin. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and mushrooms are weird. Like I've had a couple mushrooms grow like a Siamese mushroom, mm. you know, like uh, two heads out of one stalk. Yeah. Oh, wow. Crazy. Um, it's, yeah. It's, it's nice. yeah. Growing mushrooms. I've had uh, yeah, it's been quite a journey. Uh, check me out on Instagram. My mushroom experience. And you can see uh, all the steps of how they're And they growing. can contact you. You're easily accessible and you can talk. And yeah, hit me up on the DM on my mushroom boom, experience. Just like that. Yeah. Um, and when, just to finish my point about the set and setting, you know, how you keep your mushrooms is important too. Once they are, once you get them and you're going to use them to consume them, keeping them in, you know, dry spaces and dark spaces is probably best. I like to freeze mine because I use them over. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't freeze. I think uh, with with weed, freezing maybe keeps it a bit longer. But mm -hmm. with mushrooms, I think um, as long as they're dried properly, mm -hmm. um, you know. Uh, yeah, in short take term, take the basis. air out of the bag and uh, just in a cool, yeah. cool, cool area. And then also, as you take them, consume them, set in setting makes a huge difference as well. Like Hundred you, percent. You're. You know. you're your atmosphere when you're taking them is 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 key. Dictates key, how, what happens. It is key. You cannot go and take mushrooms and then go to, you know, your buddy's place who's watching UFC. It just won't work. No, it you won't. Have to, you know, <laughs> you know, go into your room, light yeah. them candles up, yeah. and don't don't be watching any serious movies. No. Don't be, you know, like watching any tear jerkers. Like mm -hmm. you want to. This is, you know, you want to mm -hmm. go on a journey. You're not there to work. Your brain isn't there to work. You want, your brain wants to, you know, you know, look at patterns, yeah. look at, uh, you know, trippy shit. You know what's happening is your brain, you got to think about it as this. You know, when you have, uh, you've done something rigorous and you have a m muscles and you're sore and then you go for a massage and you go for a foot massage, yep. you go a little spa day and when you come out feeling like not a hundred percent better, but you come out feeling 50% better. Refreshed. Refreshed, right? Yeah. Think about that is what mushrooms are doing to your brain. You wouldn't go out after a night of partying and go on to another party unless, you know, it's a long I've weekend, it. right? It's I've a long week. It. I've done it too, right? <laughs> oh. But oh. and then it goes to the week. Yeah, yeah it's a long right. Week. It can it can be oh, it can you know it's not good. You don't do that. What mushrooms do for you if you use them correctly is they massage your brain. Yeah, they relax it. They put your brain like they've showed pictures where they have small little brains, depressed brains, are these little rock hard. You know, like those uh, bowling balls with the five pin bowling balls. Yeah, you know, it's like that little rock hard. And then they show the brain, same brain on mushrooms, and it's this big flowery brain like you always see in the images, right? Yeah, and you know that's what it does, dude. It opens up your brain to suggestion. You know, and you know, even when I work with patients and I use their, we use certain music. I make sure I use music with no words. Yep. Right, because when you're under that influence of mushrooms at a high level, any words and suggestions will make you think a different way. Yeah, and they will stick with you. They'll stick with you, and it will rob you of what your brain is trying to do. Your brain's trying to put itself back together, and if it has to process words or suggestions then you're in trouble. I think the best place uh, to do mushrooms would be in nature. No, 100%. Yeah. And, see, and this is where we can get to because this is where we're going as, as microdose coaches. You know, hopefully when this world opens up again, um, 
if you're listening to this soon in, if you're soon. listening to this in 2030 and there's some crazy <laughs> epidemic they're like wow these guys are on top what of shit was closed. <laughs> yeah, right but if when do we come out of this we're gonna hold these retreats with our professionals and with uh we have some indeed uh, we have some medical professionals on, uh, we have to come some on shamans on shamans board. yoga uh you know retreat into the rainforest for you know a day or two days whatever it is you know i mean these things are what people need these are the therapy sessions that people need to truly fix their brains a lot man. of people need to reset a yeah. lot of people have been uh you know uh in the rat race so long that they have a routine and you know, sometimes it's hard to get out of that routine, you know, with drug addicts, for mm-hmm. instance, they have a routine. You know, I look at it like you have two sides of your brain. you got your right side and your left side. And in addiction, you just, yeah, look like you have half a brain yeah. because you don't use your, your left side. Your conscious part. You it's don't. You just, that's what you have to do. So when you microdose or, you know, macrodose, mm-hmm. it gives your brain a charge and it's sort of like a reset. Yeah. And it just... uh yeah, yeah I, it helps. I think it's the wave of the future. I think mushrooms will be bigger than marijuana. And the reason I think that is because mushrooms are medical. Microdosing yeah. is medical, strictly. People don't microdose to get high yeah. or to, you know, maybe to smile. That's mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. And marijuana, I think it's recreational. Yeah. You know, and half the people that are doing it medically, they only got their medical license so they can do it recreationally. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm a perfect example of that. Mm-hmm. You know, I have arthritis in the hand uh, so bad that it was causing me pain. My doctor gave me a MMR card. Mm-hmm. and uh, But it wasn't for the pain. Actually, it made the pain a little bit more. It made me concentrate on the pain more. Mm-hmm. So it, it was definitely just for recreational. Yeah. And I, I'm the same as you. I, I really think, I, I don't know what I could use weed uh, medically for besides probably pain, right? That's the number one thing. I think medically weed, um, as soon, they're, they're, they're breaking it up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of companies that have separated the cannabinoids and yeah. they're finding um, some things in the cannabinoids that are working really well for rejuvenating skin yeah, and stuff. So there amazing. are there are a lot of uh, medical reasons for marijuana. But what I'm saying is most marijuana users don't use it medically. They use it recreationally. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so if you are out there right now and you're thinking about growing some mushrooms, let me tell you right now, do <laughs> not do it in your mama's basement or in your basement, try to think you're just going to plant some mushrooms and grow it. Your house will be screwed by the end of the year. Uh, you could mold, you could get fung. It's a fungus that well, has you, pores. If you grow them at home, I mean, uh, I mean, mushrooms are a very clean, it's very clean mm. to grow mushrooms um, as long as you do it properly. Mm-hmm. Um, Not like the old days where guys had the tables. Remember I that? Think, yeah, I think with the spores uh, all through the walls. Remember? Oh yeah, <laughs> way yeah. back if in the day. Gonna, if you're gonna <laughs> grow them, you either grow them in bags or you grow them in a bin where you're not gonna, you know, get spores all over the place or, you know, do water damage. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but I mean, mushrooms. If you're gonna, if you're thinking about growing them, do your research. Yeah, man. and contact lot. you. Yeah, at my Mercados experience. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely, uh, um, yeah, at my my mushroom experience. Oh, my mushroom experience, right? Yeah. And I mean, at least just if they're going to do it, like ask someone who knows, you're open, they can call you and text you. You don't want anybody to screw up their world and waste a whole bunch of money for nothing, right? You want some advice, James will give it to you. Uh, you just got to hit them up on there. Uh, yeah, but if you're interested in microdosing, go to microdosebc.net uh, and you can find a lot of selection there to help you out. And, you know, there's a chat on there as well. Hit up the chat, right? And uh, and you'll get some great advice, right? And remember, before you do any of this stuff, make sure you consult a physician. Make sure that you're not on any meds that are going to mess you up when you do it. Uh, my advice or what I did was I got myself off of meds because I hate medication and I think it's just the worst thing you can put in your body and I wanted to try something natural and it fixed me and it will fix you too. All you got to do is believe and try. Amen. Right? Yeah, that's Amen. It. All right, thanks for joining us on the second op- episode here of, my, of uh, The Morning Dose. Don't forget to take your dose in the morning. That's always the best time to get your dosing on, right? 
start your day the right way and have an amazing one. All right. Make sure you have an amazing day today. Summer's on its way. Uh, and Hell yeah. we're going to see you again next episode. And I think, you know what, next episode, I think we should talk about, uh, the therapy aspect yeah. of, of the macro dose. The hero dose is what I like to Get call down it. to the roots. people. We'll share some stories about the hero dose and how it uh, really helped people. And, uh, and we'll talk about your experience uh, with people microdosing that you've hooked up and just some of the things they've told you that's changed in their lives, right? Without dropping yeah. names, I guess. Yeah. All right. Okay. We'll see you on another episode of uh, The Morning Dose. My name is Mike Colton. This is James Coulter. You guys have a good one today. Thank you.